Worker Seagull Review. Let's go. What is up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. That's right, finally my Worker Seagull arrived in the mail and pretty excited about this thing. I think it's gonna be a improvement on the Worker Harrier, which that blaster was awesome, so that seems to be kind of hard to do, but I think this is gonna be even more popular than that, so let's check this baby out. So I finally got this guy in the mail yesterday and it was pouring down rain. So I wasn't waiting for it to stop raining to go ahead and take this thing out of its packaging and check it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll that footage of me unboxing this thing and then we'll get to talking about it. Well guys, it's a bit rainy outside. So we're gonna check this guy out inside. I just received it just showed up on my doorstep. We gotta crack this thing open immediately. Let's do it. All right, let's see what's inside here. Okay, so this is everything included in the box. You get both halves of the blaster and you do have a metal plunger rod and a spring inside of the main portion of the blaster. This comes pre-lubricated so everything is there, you just have to put it together, put two screws in, and then your blaster will more or less be ready to go. Went ahead and fully assembled this blaster. It's pretty straightforward, but they do have directions to kind of help you out with that and give you more information on the blaster if you need. But basically you just put in two screws to connect the two halves, and then you just have to put your top rail on, which are the four short screws. These are the two long ones. Go ahead and throw your vertical foregrip on there, your rifle scar barrel if you want, throw the magazine in and you're pretty much good to go. Those are basically some of the items you get with the blaster, but in more detail, I'll go over those real quick. You do get a worker rifle scar barrel. Unfortunately, you don't get that bearing scar they show in the picture on the box, which would have been really cool to include that, but uh, I think that's something you'll have to buy separate, obviously. But this one works really well and obviously is a much cheaper option. And this time it actually fits the barrel. So they've done something to this barrel differently than they did with the Harrier. So this actually fits on really nicely now. And, and that's awesome that we can actually use the uh, rifled scar barrel. The Picatinny rail on top will fit all your Picatinny attachments. They also give you some really cool iron sights which have fiber optic in them. I'm really glad they included some iron sights with this, unlike the Harrier, when they didn't give you anything. So that's really awesome. And I honestly plan on using these with this blaster and I might even try to see if I can buy those separate. I'm not sure if you can, but if you can, I might have to pick up another set. Picatinny rail is fully metal. So this is a super strong, sturdy blaster, just like the Harrier. I also got side Picatinny rails for each side of the blaster but this was something I don't think is included when you buy this. I don't know if you get plastic ones with the non pre ordered version like mine is. I'm not real sure what they plan to include there or if you just don't get anything. I will say that they kind of interfere with priming the blaster, at least the one, depending on what hand you prime with. But for me, it's the left one here. It kind of gets in the way of my thumb, the way I like to grip it. But so you may not even want them on there anyways. You do get this kind of interesting stock thing here that goes on the back of your buffer tube. It's a very minimal stock, has a weird shape to it, kind of slips off your shoulder a little bit, but if you put some grip tape back there, I think it would be actually a pretty nice option if you want something super compact and short, but it is very short in this form factor. So I think they gave you this as a, something that looked kind of cool in photos, but may not be the most practical thing, but you can just remove that and throw on the buffer tube of a choice and it kept the blaster cost, I'm sure, down for them. So they kind of just assumed, I think, that everybody would just go with their own option with the stock. You also have a Allen key that stores underneath there with this included, but it does still have that spot when you remove this that your worker Harrier has. So no worries if you want to use a buffer tube stock, you still have a place to put that Allen key and store it with the blaster. And that Allen key removes all the screws besides the foregrip with your blaster. So 
good to have on hand. Grip is just like the Harrier, really comfortable, beefy. That is a rubber grip there, and that is awesome. One of the best things about Worker Blasters right now is this grip. Love that so much. We also have a metal part down here, which is honestly a big improvement in my opinion over the Harrier. It gives you a sling point, which is great, especially for a small blaster like this. And then it doesn't have that big hand guard anymore and the gap isn't there in the trigger well. So that's nice because I know a lot of people didn't like that. It didn't bother me too much, but I do think this is a better option and I didn't really care for the hand guard. At least I, it didn't bother me, it was fine, but I definitely prefer this form factor over that. You have your safety right here. It is very sticky, honestly. It takes a lot to push, which I guess is a good thing. So hopefully it doesn't get pushed, you know, accidentally. But yeah, that is, that is uh, there just like you would get on any high powered blaster. Then you have your mag release right here and a brand new mag design from Worker, which is a 15 round banana mag, which looks really tactical and pretty realistic, honestly. So if you're into that, that's pretty sweet. They are coming out with this in different colors though to match your Harrier. So that's pretty, pretty cool also in my opinion. Uh, but this is a nice, nice offering and I'm glad they included this with this blaster unlike the Harrier where you just got like a very short little basically for looks kind of magazine. This is actually something you can use. The foregrip is a new foregrip offered by Worker. It's a very short with a nice little angle there. Again, I think it's looks better than it actually works depending on your hand size. It is fine, so you may like this, but if not, you can always throw on like the normal worker vertical foregrip or another foregrip of your choice. Although just like the Harrier, you have a very short amount of Picatinny and if it basically extends any past that, you won't be able to fully prime your blaster because of this, this notch right here. So you are kind of limited on your choices of foregrip there. So other than what you see here on the blaster, you will also get a longer barrel and a beefier spring. So you do get two spring options with this blaster and then two barrel options. So that's really cool. I'm glad they include that with this blaster. We will be testing both spring loads and both barrel options over the chronograph. So definitely stay tuned for that. You also get some extra O-rings and some extra screws and a couple extra catches just in case you lose one when you open up the blaster. You also get an Allen key to remove your foregrip or to install your foregrip. And you get some worker darts and some stickers that you can put on the side of your blaster if you so choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this stock and put a buffer tube stock on to kind of show you what that looks like and the way I will be running this blaster. So all you have to do to remove this stock is remove this one screw with your Allen key and then it pulls right off. So like I was saying, there is a spot for your Allen key right back here. So we'll go ahead and slide that on. And then this is my favorite buffer tube and we'll go ahead and put that on. I like it pretty compact. So I think that's like the second closest you can get. You can go even like that. So that's like real tight, but I think I like it right there. That's what's good for me. But obviously there's a lot of choices with the buffer tube stock that you can choose from in terms of length. So that's really awesome. All right, I actually stole my foregrip from my Unicorn, which I actually quite like this foregrip and it works really well on this blaster in my opinion. And that gives you all the purchase you need and still is pretty minimal looking in my opinion with this blaster. So that's pretty, pretty cool right there. Blaster, once again. Has an awesome seal. And that was even with the rifle barrel on. So that's pretty cool. Also has your return spring, so you don't have to worry about pulling the grip all the way forward to load your dart in, so that's pretty nice. I did notice that sometimes when I was firing this earlier that it wouldn't quite seat all the way, so just make sure that it's all the way forward. I didn't have that problem every time though, so maybe it just needs to be loosened up a little bit since it's new. So this blaster I got in purple, but it actually comes in quite a few different colors, which is pretty awesome. I think it comes in pink, green, tan, white. I think those are all the colors. So you have quite a few options when you select your Seagull and what color variant you want. So that's pretty darn cool. 
that you get it in so many different colors, but I do like the purple quite a bit. It's a very different color for, you know, for worker to do. Um, there's kind of pastel colors, but I like it, you know? I might have to coordinate my Harrier with my Seagull in terms of the purple, so stay tuned for that. Trigger is the same as the Harrier also. It's that flat design, which I honestly am not a humongous fan of. It is a metal trigger, which is nice, but I would like a little bit of a curve to my trigger personally, but you know, I've kind of gotten used to this and it does have that texture on the front, so your finger doesn't really slip off. This blaster, obviously it comes with a 15 round banana mag, but is compatible with all your standard Talon magazines, not angled, obviously, mags. So your standard worker Talon mag, your 18 round banana mag, and I believe the also the 10 round straight mag. I think that's the size of that one. I don't have any of those, but all the other ones work just fine. And then most of your other mags that are similar to Talons in that same form factor should work as well in theory. So as far as size is concerned, obviously this is smaller than the Harrier, but this is basically the exact same size as a Talon Claw. So pretty nice little form factor in my opinion, but to show you guys, Harrier, Seagull. So as you can see, it's quite a bit shorter, but still a decent size, but it is quite a bit bigger than the Unicorn. So significantly bigger than the Unicorn. I thought it was gonna be slightly bigger than the Unicorn. It is quite a bit bigger than the Unicorn and quite a bit heavier because of all the metal components, but both blasters I think are excellent. And we may do a comparison of these two blasters down the road if you guys wanna see that. So let me know down in the comments below if you'd like to see a comparison of the uh, Seagull and the Unicorn. But let's go ahead, take this thing, put it over the chronograph, see what kind of performance we're getting. All right, so this is the lowest powered spring with the shortest barrel. And we're gonna test with the rifle barrel on, which may lower FPS slightly, but I honestly don't think it'll affect it too much. And we're gonna be using the red and orange Gen 3 HE darts. Uh, they sent purple ones along. I'm pretty sure those are the HE darts, but I'm gonna go ahead and use what I've been using in all my videos so you guys will, it'll stay consistent with every other blaster I've shot on this channel recently. And uh, that'll, that should give you guys a better idea of kind of how it's performing to other blasters. So let's go ahead and uh, see what kind of performance we're getting. Wow, that's a big number. How did that happen? <laughs> All right, 15 shots, here we go. 150, 164, 157, 153, 130, 161, 132, 130, 157, 157, 163, 147, 120, a couple more, 159, 140. So obviously some really pretty impressive numbers there. I would have hoped for it to be a little more consistent. So that's something that's pretty typical with lower powered springers that are sealed breech systems that have a little inconsistency. This may benefit just like the Unicorn from bamboo darts opposed to your standard worker darts. So something to think about if you're planning on using this in certain you know arenas, but it still was pretty good. And you know we'll see what the other options do in terms of increasing that spring load or the barrel length and the barrel length. So just like the Harrier, this is a fairly quick teardown blaster, obviously. You can kind of get, get that idea when you put it together. But to show you guys, grab our Allen key out the back there. We will actually, I'm gonna start with the two, just you need to just remove two of the screws on the Picatinny rail. and then try not to lose them, but they do give you extras. And then the two long screws 
holding together the two halves. And it'll probably be a good idea to remove your mag first. And then we can remove those two. And there is some pre-compression, so be aware of that. Make sure you keep it together, that'll help you get it out. And then it should just come right in half. There we go. And then you can pull out your plunger rod and spring and then pull that off and we'll change that out. Install the heavier spring, heat sink to the back. My guess is that heat sink helps the spring not rub on the catch. That is my guess. And we'll go ahead and put this thing back together. All right, higher powered spring, shorter barrel still. I'm not gonna test the higher or the lower power spring with the longer barrel because it was already pretty inconsistent uh, with the shorter barrel. So that's just gonna get worse with the longer barrel. So I don't think you'd wanna use that lower power spring with the longer barrel. But we'll go ahead and try this with the shorter barrel and then again with the longer barrel. A little heftier prime, you can definitely feel that. 168. 139. 165. 177. I can see some foam and some moisture coming out of here, which is interesting. I'm not sure why. Maybe the darts got a little wet. I did just reuse those darts. 178. 172. 178. 181. 175. 176. 180. 185. 173. 175 and we're out so much more consistent with the heavier spring with that barrel length this is more in the range of where i plan to use this blaster for like 200 fps and cap wars so you want to be in that 180 to 200 range so we'll see how much more performance if any we get by adding the longer spring in so the barrel is really easy to swap out you just unscrew and you can pull it right out. All right, 15 fresh darts. Let's see what kind of performance we're getting. 191. 187. 188. 165. 168. 168. 180. 177. 190, 150, 183, 181, 174, 180, 148, uh, yep, we're out. So this thing is pretty dry fire proof. I dry fired it there seems to be just fine to that so that's really good just like the harrier was this is a very durable blaster definitely more inconsistent though with the fps with this longer barrel i think this may be a touch too long for this spring load this may be better if they come out with other springs for this blaster this may be better for the next higher up spring but i would have liked to see this barrel be about the half the length longer than it is and see how that does i think that would have been a better length for it but I'm not an expert on that, just my personal opinion, but we'll go ahead and put some shots over the chronograph. And we're just gonna do that with the higher powered spring and the shorter barrel, because I think that's probably the best way to run this blaster, at least with the, what we have today, uh, the most consistent. So we'll give it the best, best bang for its buck and see what kind of performance we're getting. All right, let's put some shots over the range, why don't we? Higher powered spring, shorter barrel. Let's see what we can do. Try to keep the blaster level.
All right. Few short shots, but mostly really nice, really good shots. And this thing is dead straight, you guys. I was shooting this inside and just pegging like a five inch circle. All right, you guys, this blaster is as expected, pretty darn sweet. You know, very impressive performances, especially with that higher power spring. I think the lower power spring may be just a, a touch low for consistency, but I still think it, it could be usable, especially if you go with a bamboo dart. That's where those really are effective is with lower FPS. But here are the short shots, and there were a couple short ones, and those are probably 70 feet or so, maybe 75. But the long ones, the ones that were good were basically, you know, from here, let's see how many feet. Basically a 10 foot range there. This is almost, this is probably 100 feet. So besides two, two, three short shots, the other 12 were very, very nice. If you need a blaster that shoots 180 FPS, I think this is a pretty good option. I would love to get it closer to 200, so maybe with that longer barrel, maybe if I shorten it just a little bit, it may get there, or we may need just a little bit more powerful of a spring, I'm not sure, but I'm sure there'll be more options coming out for this blaster. I don't think the Harrier springs will work in this blaster, and I'm not sure about the barrels, but we will test that back on the couch, and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so the Worker Seagull is pretty darn sweet, if I do say so myself. Barrels are exactly the same as the Harrier. This is actually the exact same barrel you get with the Harrier, the short one. So the shortest Harrier barrel is the longest barrel you get with the Seagull. So they are interchangeable, so that's good to know. Although I don't think you would really want a barrel too much longer than this, so keep that in mind. But the Seagull, I really love. I think they've made some major improvements with this blaster over the Harrier and they've added on some things I thought were really nice you know especially for a blaster that comes in at a lower price point uh, we got really cool iron sights in my opinion I really love these a lot <laughs> I'm I'm a big fan of fiber optic iron sights so these are pretty sweet and the aperture is just the perfect height in my opinion for for this blaster so that's really nice to see grip is always awesome on these blasters and this new banana magazine i think is going to be pretty popular foregrip and stock on these blaster on this blaster i don't think is going to be something that a lot of people run in my opinion but i don't have a problem with them including these i think it's obviously they needed to include something uh, on this blaster and to keep the price point down they wanted something minimal something short and compact uh, and that definitely gives you that with this and i do think that this is usable uh, especially if you put some sort of grip tape on there from so it would keep from sliding off if you want something really good for cqb i think this would be nice and it, it'll keep the blaster really tight that being said i do think most people will put a buffer tube stock on there and it's really nice to have both of those options i think that's great foregrip i think is also usable but it's just a little small for my taste i really like the unicorn foregrip and maybe i'll have to look and see if i can get another one of those or maybe there's a 3d printed version of that same thing or maybe i'll just have to trade it between blasters but not that big a deal but this this is an option and it definitely looks cool on the blaster love that they actually made this actually work this time with these barrels so i guess these barrels aren't quite the same as the Harrier. I'm assuming they've made this change with Harrier barrels that they're selling now too, because this actually fits this barrel, but doesn't fit on the Harrier. But yeah, my, my guess is they've made that change now to any extra barrels you buy for the Harrier, I'm hoping. But it's nice to see that actually fit on the blaster, so they fixed that problem. They also got rid of the handguard on this, which I know a lot of people didn't like, and that gap, and I think that was a nice change as well. So honestly, I. I think this is a winner. I think this is a really cool blaster and I think it is going to be I think it's going to be pretty popular like I said at the beginning of the video with everybody. So, uh, let me know if you picked one up what you think of yours. Let me know if you plan to pick one up. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram so you can see any, you know, maybe extra tidbits on this blaster maybe I'll do or other blasters in the future if I you know, decide to make a change. Maybe I'll cut down that barrel 
a, the longer barrel a little bit and see if that improves performance. Definitely leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe. Do all the YouTube algorithmic things, uh, and I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.